Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome to Monday Morning Jumpstart. This is Karen Hilton, founder and chief vision caster for the Rock Your Vision Masterclass Community and TAP Executive Coaching. Listen, if you're watching this right now, that means you're awake or at least you're working on it. Come on in here. We're going to have a great morning. We're going to kick it off. And I am so excited, you guys. I feel like like I feel a little bit like a groupie because the two people we're going to be featuring this morning are serious superstars in their own right. I am so excited to introduce you to a few of the people that make up this community and then these two amazing guests who are new to our community, but I'm hoping I'll see them again. I want to introduce you to Miss Natasha Lampkin. Hey, Natasha. Hi. How are you this morning? I am fabulous. Good. I am so glad to meet you. So honored. You would take your time to spend with us this morning. Of course. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. So thank you for inviting me to this plat platform. Absolutely. Well, Natasha, I want to hear a little bit more about your story. I want you to share some of what you're doing with this amazing community. Uh, but for right now, I'm going to pop over and introduce you to one of my favorite leaders on the entire planet. His name is Mike Kenny. Hey, Mike. Good morning, how are you? I'm good, how are you doing this morning? I am fantastic. What a great way to start the week off. I'm so excited. Yeah. To <laughs> well, listen, um, you know what? Mike and I have not seen each other in two years. We established two years, I said three. It feels like a really long time. But you know what? I am so thrilled. Um, when we were kind of formulating this topic, around linking your passions to your purpose. Mike was one of the first leaders I thought about. And so, you know what I said, I'm going to just take like, take a risk, you know, because Mike is important people. So his people called my people and then we got some things going <laughs> and here he is. So Mike, we're glad to have you this morning. Uh, pleasure is mine. Awesome. I also want to like reintroduce this community to some of the folks that are favorites. We don't have favorites, but these guys are our favorites. We got Jeff Bull calling from California. Hey, Jeff. Hey, good morning. How you doing this morning? I, despite it being 520, I am actually really fat. Oh, okay. You guys, Jeff gets up just for y'all. I'm just saying, that's the only mm -hmm. reason he's away. That's so it. props to Jeff. All right. I think really for my son, so. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Well, it's good to see you, buddy. And we've got Coach Lawrence Henderson. Come on, everybody. Give it up. What's, for up, Coach what's up? What's up? What's up? Yeah. Top of the morning to you. <laughs> it's good to see you in here, yeah. Lawrence. And then I saved the best for last out of those three. And it's the beautiful, the amazing, wicked smart Coach Kim Dudash. Hey, Coach good Kim. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Happy Monday. <laughs> All right. Listen, guys, we've got so much to talk about. I'm going to pop over into the live stream. But before I do that, listen, if you're new to this community, I just want to say welcome and good morning. Get up. That's what I say every morning. Um, we are so excited that you're here. This is such a special place. I created the Rock Your Vision Masterclass community actually seven years ago. But it is really just since last year that we started going live. And then once all the craziness of 2020 started, I started going live and opening up the Rock Your Vision Masterclass community as a free resource for people to stay encouraged. And there are really three pillars that we focus on, getting focused, connecting to your purpose, and developing the perspective that you're going to need to do life on your own terms. And listen, that applies if you are a professional in a corporate space or in an office environment. And it applies if you're an entrepreneur, maybe you're a community leader or a ministry leader. Whatever role you play, there's a place for you here. So we've got a lot on the menu. Um, I'm going to pop over now into the live stream and just see who's here. I know for a fact Sarah Furman is in the house because she's running our live stream on the back end. Y'all say hey to Sarah. She's amazing. She's our social media marketing manager, and she is awesome. She does such a great job for us. We've got um, Coach Akila Charlemagne. Y'all, come on, give it up for Coach Akila. It's her birthday. Y'all say happy birthday. I saw you out there, Coach Akila. I hope, I hope like you kept it real, you know, and legal yesterday. I'm just saying, I saw you. Anyway, uh, we've got Vanessa Aliaga. Hey, Vanessa. 
Vanessa is our operations manager for TAP Executive Coaching and the Rock Your Vision Masterclass community. She is basically the other side of my brain. So if you need something or you want something, you got to ask Vanessa first. Um, and then let's see who else. Okay, we've got our usuals, Jeff and Kim. We've got some other folks in the house. Good morning, Learning is Fun 1000. So glad you're here. Um, we want to know where you're calling from. So if you are new to this community, go ahead and drop it in the comments. We want to know where where you at, as the kids used to say. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to know where you are. Okay, listen, this morning we are talking about this topic, linking your passions to your purpose, all right? Linking your passion to your purpose to say, Karen, why would you be talking about that right now? Well, since all of the crazy of 2020 started, one of the things that I began seeing and hearing as an executive coach and an organizational strategist is even with some of the best leaders on the planet, right? These are the ones who you would think have it all together, but there's this been, been this kind of collective sense of overwhelm. That was a word I heard over and over and over again. I feel overwhelmed. I feel um, afraid. Um, I feel a little bit lost. I'm going to pop into the stream for just a second. And for our panelists today, what are some of the words or the descriptors that you guys have heard about this year over the past eight months or so? What are some of the words you guys have heard or felt this season? Um. Depression. Anybody? Stress. Stressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What? Intense. intense. Say it again. Sorry. Oh, intense. intense. Things have been intense. Absolutely. Anything yeah. else? I also heard blessed. Blessed. Yeah. For some people, it's been a blessed. Yes. Mm -hmm. Natasha. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. unprecedented. Unprecedented is another word. Unprecedented. Yep. Uncertain. Mm. Uncertain. That's right. We're going to talk about that in just a second. We've heard all of those words, haven't we? And you know what? It occurred to me that although we've never seen a pandemic before of this magnitude in our generation, have we? We've never been here before. But what occurred to me was there are some things that we've been through. If you're watching this live stream, I just want you to know you've been through some things. Some of you have been through things that are unprecedented, where life has felt scary and overwhelming, where you felt stuck and kind of wrapped up in this idea of a wilderness, right? This is absolutely part of kind of the, the, the legacy that 2020 tried to leave. And you know what? I made a decision about something. I'm not going to leave it there because guess what? The year isn't over. And I don't know about you, but I can pull from some of what I've been through to help me navigate the way. And so we've been talking about this whole idea of purpose because here's the thing, I got a message for you. If you have a pulse, you have a purpose. That means if, you're, if you've made it this far, you've got something to do. There isn't time to give up and I'm not gonna let you. And in fact, I've got it, I've got it all over. Can y'all see this? I wanna give a shout out to 1080G. This is my swag this morning. I don't know if y'all can see this. It says, if I have a pulse, I got a purpose. Can y'all shout it out to 1080G? This is, this is one of my marketing and branding folks. I want y'all to know he is something special. I called him and I said, I said, hey, listen here, George. His name is George Felker. Y'all look him up, 1080G. He's on Instagram and, and uh, Facebook, all over social media. And I told him my quote, I'm like, I want this somewhere where I can see it. If you have a pulse, you have a purpose. I want y'all to write that down somewhere. Um, and we're going to get after it this morning, talking about linking our passions to our purpose. But before we do anything else, I want to just welcome my guests again, Miss Natasha Lampkin, if you're just joining us. Natasha is an international New York runway model. And can you tell she is drop dead gorgeous. Come on, y'all. Y'all just give it up. I pop an emoji or something in there, a fire emoji. This woman is beautiful, but um, don't get it twisted. She is also a beast in the boardroom. Can I get an amen? Okay. <laughs> this woman is fierce. And Natasha, we're so thrilled you're here. Would you do us a favor? Introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about your business, Tashi Inc., 
And I'd love to know, how did you get from the runway to the boardroom? Okay. Hi, everyone. <laughs> okay. So uh, Tashi Inc. is a faith-based faith lifestyle brand that expresses the Christian faith through modest fashion, mm -hmm. media, and empowering event events. And I graduated from FIT. And during my... Um, and that's Fashion Institute of Technology, is that right? Yes. yes, Fashion Institute of Technology. So while I was in school, I started modeling. Mm -hmm. After graduation, I wanted to pursue my modeling career full time. Okay. And um, during my during the peak of my career, I mean, I always had a relationship with God, mm -hmm. but uh, I wasn't as firm with my my whole stance on Christianity. So yeah. as a lot of Christian folks will say, I was in and out of the world, <laughs> kind of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, during the peak of my career where I was getting a lot of gigs, a lot of bookings, I mean, commercials, print work, you name it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I said, I felt a sense of emptiness. Okay. While all these good things were happening for me. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I started praying to God and I'm like, what is going on with me? Like, I, I should be really happy, but I'm not really happy. I feel yeah. very empty. And um, God started to work inside of me and he started to um, reveal a lot of things about myself. Yeah. And as I spent more time with him and um, uh, listening to sermons and um, worship music, I started to get into a deeper relationship with him. And I wanted to be more Christ-like. I wanted to be more modest, mm -hmm. you know, modest with my my dressing and, and everything like that. So he convicted me of immodesty. <laughs> okay, so let's 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 sit there for a minute because yeah. this is important. And let me just say that one of the best things about this community is that although I am also a faith girl, this is an incredibly diverse community. Yeah. We have such an amazing um, diaspora in the world. And so one of the things I love about this community is that we have Christians and um, Catholics and Jewish people and Buddhists, and we've got kind of the rainbow in every sense in this community. So I'm hoping that when you listen to Natasha, you will take away this very important thing. She just said something incredibly important. Now, I love the whole Jesus theme. But what she said that I think applies to everybody is this. She really demonstrated in that experience the three pillars of our community. She got focused, right? Is that right, Natasha? You yeah. got focused on kind of there was this what I call positive disruption in mm -hmm. your um, in your life experience, right? Yes. You, you had something happening to you that did not sit with your values. And we're going to be talking about values Next week, as we get ready to launch our webinar, uh, The Path Back to Your Why, we're going to talk about the importance of values. Whatever those are for you, you'd be surprised how many leaders are not connected to their values. Uh, so you got focused and then you connected to your purpose. Yes. You found a connection to something that resonated in you that was deeper and bigger than you. Is that right? Yes. Absolutely. Definitely. And then the third thing was you developed perspective, right? I always say that perspective is the anchor that holds you when the winds of life and career blow. And guess what? Hello, 2020. Winds will blow, right? Come on, guys. Like that will happen in any year. One of the things that I really have been encouraging our community to do is to think beyond the pandemic, right? We're still trying to get through it. We're still trying to figure it out. But you got to think beyond that wilderness experience for you. So Natasha, you were kind of in this place where you needed to do something different because your values and your faith were really pulling you in a different direction. How did you, like, when did you realize that starting a business was what was next for you? Well, that's the uh, the other thing I was going to touch into. So mm -hmm. after he can 
he convicted after I was convicted of immodesty, I uh, felt the need to leave the modeling industry to pursue a career in fashion. Wow. Corporate fashion, to be exact. Okay. Tell uh, me what you mean by corporate fashion so folks will understand kind of what your vibe is. So when you uh, say fashion, some people, they correlate that with uh, working in a retail store. Right. And, um, I'm talking about the people that, that works behind the scenes, that works in the buildings. Okay. To, um, create this clothing line. Yeah. So we have like different uh, areas of fashion as far as marketing, merchandising, buying, production. You know, there's different areas and that's what you call corporate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So I, I, um, after I had that sense that I needed to leave the modeling industry, uh, supernaturally, I actually got a, I wouldn't say it was supernatural, but it was definitely uh, a hot, like one of those moments that I was like, this is def definitely a God moment. Yeah. Because I wasn't looking for a job, but I got a call from a recruiter uh, asking me uh, if I was interested in a job in marketing for this big fashion company. Mm -hmm. Like, um, <laughs> how did you get my information? Right. Uh, apparently they got it from FIT. And I, I went on the interview, I got the job. And while I was working in marketing, Mm -hmm. That's when I had an epiphany that I needed to start my own clothing line that promoted modesty and fashion, but also the Christian faith. So um, that's when, I mean, I always had a passion for fashion, but that's when I tied in my passion and my purpose. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, I knew that fashion, this was more meaningful. This was more, um, this was more done. Uh, it was, this was not only about me, but it was about other people as well. Wow. Okay. So let's let's stick there for a moment. So this idea that your your passion will bring you to the table, but your purpose will keep you at the table. Yeah. Right? Come yeah. on, that's good. Yes. Yeah, passion. We talked about this. Um, we talked about it last week. We talked about it the week before. Passion will um, get you excited. It will energize your ideas. It will refresh your perspective. It will do all of that, right? You know how it is. You get interested in something. Um, and if you're anything like me, like I'm that person, I, I get excited about a puppy walking down the street or a baby, or I see, I see a product and I'm like, oh, I can do that better. And that's my passion for that moment. I'm fixated on it, right? Um, but really bringing that forward to say, hold on a second, when things get hard, is that something I really want to do? Right? Y'all been there, haven't you? You start something, it seems like a good idea at the time. Anybody, any of my panelists, y'all know what I'm talking about? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Natasha, I'm going to have you pause right there because I'm going to jump over to the amazing Mike Kinney. Hey, Mike Kinney. Hi, how are you? How you doing? Great. Good. Okay. So we want to know who is this Mike Kenny that Karen keeps talking about? I've been talking about you for days, dude. And like somebody texted me and they were like, okay, who's Mike Kenny? And I'm like, uh-uh, you need to watch the live stream. We're going to figure it out together. Mike, introduce yourself to this amazing community. Tell us like what you do and um, a little bit about your story. So I'll start with what I do, then I'll get into my story. Okay. Um, I'm Mike Kenny, um, the executive vice president of Ripken Baseball. So I run a youth baseball business for Cal Ripken. Um, our now, business wait, hold on a second. Yeah. I, you know, I don't, I know who Cal Ripken is, <laughs> but could you just break it down a little bit so people sure. will understand the greatness in the room, please? Sure. Uh, Cal Ripken is Hall of Fame shortstop, arguably the greatest shortstop to ever play. Come on. Um, also, also known as the Iron Man, because he, um, you want to talk about passion, you want to talk about dedication. Here's a gentleman that got up and did his job um, over 2,600 games in a row, which is the longest streak in the history of sports. Wow. Um, wow. And he did it because his father instilled in him these ideas that you take it one day at a time and you get up and you do your job. You have yeah. an assignment, you do it. You don't look too far ahead. You focus on the day. 
So whether he was hurt or whether he was tired or whatever, going through a slump, he got up and did it and did it and became a national icon, not only because what he accomplished on the field, yeah. um, MVP, World Series, Rookie of the Year, wow. but for what he did and what he meant, this movement. And on September 6th this year, we actually celebrated the 25th anniversary of him breaking Lou Gehrig's streak for the most consecutive game played. Wow, come on, you guys. That's amazing. Congratulations. What an accomplishment. Yes. So Cal has now uh, dedicated his post-playing career to business. And his businesses are the following. He runs what I run for him, which is a youth baseball business. So we have facilities across the country. Mm -hmm. And we give kids the opportunity to play baseball, which a lot of people do. The difference that um, our company has is we allow them to feel like a major league player for that day. So if you're 10, 10, 11, 12, 13 years old, you come to our facilities. All of our facilities are replicas of major league baseball stadiums. So you can play at Fenway Park. You can play at Camden Yards. You can play at Yankee Stadium. And you can feel like you are a major league player for the day. We put Gatorade in the dugout. We give you chewing gum. We announce your name. We play your walk-up music. We do all these things to give kids the opportunity to do something great and to have that moment that they feel, even though they may never do that ever again in their life. Um, and one of the other businesses that Cal uh, has, which is a phenomenal one, uh, he has a foundation in his father's name. Mm -hmm. And this foundation, as of the end of this year, will have donated 100 uh, all turf fields to underprivileged communities across the country. Wow. Uh, each field costs somewhere between two to $5 million. And he's donated these with his foundation all across the entire country. We're as Northwest as uh, Washington, um, California. I mean, everywhere, you name it. We have fields up in Maine. And so he's taken this business approach um, and I run this business for him. So I am beyond fortunate to do so. Yes. Um, but it's just stopping my journey, the latest stop in my journey yeah. um, of, a, of a kid from Boston, the oldest Irish Catholic family, um, oldest of six kids. We had nine people living in this small little house. No one had ever gone to college. And I thought I was going to follow along in those lines as well. Yeah. And something possessed me uh, at the last minute to decide to go to school. And from there, I said, oh, if I'm doing this, let's see what I can make of myself. Do it. Yeah. And <clears throat> I met some unbelievable people along the way because I had one passion that I really wanted in my life. I wanted to work in sports. Okay. You can see on the shelves behind me, they're filled with some of my my trophies and tokens right. um, that, that I've collected over the years. And I've been so fortunate to work for the Boston Celtics, the Harlem Globetrotters, the Sixers, the Flyers, um, all sorts of events. I've done Justin Timberlake. I've done Beyonce. I've done Bruce Springsteen. Now I really, now I really want to rub shoulders with you. You had me. Uh, at okay. You name it. I've done. I've done all these things. Um, but it's all because it's been my passion. I've wanted to chase down. I've oh. wanted the opportunity to be part of um, sports. And <clears throat> throughout that journey, I went from a kid who thought he was going to end up doing what was my job before I decided to go to college. I was a grave digger in my hometown. And that's what I did. I worked for the town um, and I dug graves and I, I manicured the lawn at the cemetery um, in Norwood, Massachusetts. I wow. thought I'd go no father. Um, mm. And then I just kept going and going and going. And now, uh, you know, I run this business, but I've traveled the world with the Globetrotters right. um, and done some great things. And uh, I had the pleasure um, and the pleasure is all mine of meeting Karen and, and her being a, a co my coach and helping me as I struggled to figure out, you know, who I was and what I wanted to do. Um, I felt this sense of I needed to be somebody that I wasn't right? Um, because I was around all these very, very, very bright, well-educated, um, successful people that act, uh, acted a certain way. Um, and had this background. And that's not me. I am not. I, I didn't go to Harvard. Um, you know, my kids don't go to the fanciest private school. I don't like arugula salad. There's nothing wrong with, it, with those things. Okay, wait a minute. Hold love on. Love it. Love it. Hold love on it. a second, y'all. Okay. It's coming. Wait for it. This is yeah. good. Okay. Mike, go on. I know where you're going with this. Okay, come on. So these are all things that like as I started to have more success in my career, I started to be around these unbelievable people that 
you know, I, I looked at it and said, okay, these can be mentors for me. But, you know, I realized that I could have success and not be exactly like them. So mm-hmm. <clears throat> being around these folks, all they want to talk about, they want to say the current, you know, buzzwords like lean in and, you know, yeah, all these they, wanted, language. they wanted to, they wanted to eat a certain way, like, oh, I'm on a, this diet or that diet, you know, whatever was kind of the in thing talk play about the role, the yeah. exercise. Yeah. Play the role very much. So. And I looked at it and said, I, I'm the, I'm the kid from the, the, the house, the 18 square, 1800 square foot house, that house that had one bathroom with nine people. Come on. Like, not that I can't evolve and get better, but like, that's not my passion right. um, to, to be the way that they were. So I was really struggling with this. And it, it kind of dawned on me at this one board dinner that we were having. And the conversation got a little, little over my head from the standpoint of they were talking about, you know, what's the best private school in the country to send your kid to? What's the best prep school? And this yeah. and that, all the things that we should aspire to have our kids do. Yeah. But it was the thing where it's like, it was the only thing. There was like no other way besides this. There was no way to like almost like humble yourself. And so like uh, everyone's ordering these arugula salads. I'm like, look, I just don't like salad. So <laughs> I've been to this place a few times and I knew that they had this great thing that I liked on their menu. It was uh, tater tots. <laughs> and so everybody goes around and they, they order their arugula salads and, you know, very proper, you know, kind of sitting there with their, you know, utensils and this and that so i whispered over to uh the waiter who had served me a bunch of times because this this restaurant was like a home away from home for me right and i said do you still have the tater tots in like the brown bag can you bring that out as my appetizer oh my gosh and they they brought it out and they put it in the table and i got looks like i was like not even on like I shouldn't have been at the table. You're not worthy to be at the I'm table. I'm not worthy of, of their audience. And at that point there, I just kind of said like, you know what? This is me. This is who I am. I like this. I can have great success in business. I can become more comfortable in my own skin if I act like me. And not okay, like, hold, on, hold on a second. I love that. Hold on a second. Because I, I know, first of all, how many people in the live stream and how many people in this esteemed panel like tater tots. Can we just come on? I love a good tot. Okay, a good like tater tots are everything. And when Mike told me that story two more than two years ago now, I knew he was my people. <laughs> I knew he was my people. And I said that to him. And and the fact that he, he even had to think about whether or not he had a place. Now I'm joking and carrying on, but there's a leadership principle here, right? Jeff, I need you to weigh in on this because I know for a fact that Jeff Bull, Jeff Bull is an amazing people leader. And by the way, y'all, Jeff just got promoted. Come on, today is his first day and we get to celebrate with him. But one of Jeff's passions is helping leaders normalize being authentic and being themselves. So Jeff, I want you to pop in here for a minute and talk about this authenticity thing. And Natasha, I want you to comment on this too about this idea of authenticity. Um, and you know, I don't know about you, but passion was actually something that was kind of frowned upon when I was a kid, right? Um, I was passionate about this, and I was pa- I'm super. I was. I've always been super extra, first of all. But I was passionate about this and passionate about that. And there was no place for that when I was coming up because it wasn't it wasn't safe. Okay, Um, pursuing your passion, uh, art, music, things like that. How many of you have been through that experience? If you're in the live stream and you heard that kind of thing, you need to go work at the post office. I actually heard this. You need to go work at the post office. Do you know that if I had gone to work at the post office, every piece of government mail would have been covered in rhinestones? Okay, (laughs) that was not a fit for me. Anyway, Jeff, talk to us a little bit about this this thing about being authentic as a leader or, and I'm not talking about as a leader in title, I'm talking about just whether you're an entrepreneur or whatever, talk to us for a minute. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm I'm so glad that uh, both Natasha and and Mike brought this up because it's, it's, Karen, you and I have talked about this a ton in the last few months as I've been prepping to sort of try to make my own like pivot in my own career. Yeah. Uh, And what's interesting is, the more and more you and I talked and the more I talked to people that I worked with, I realized, so I just to set the base, 
I work for Cisco. Um, I just started in a new part of Cisco called DevNet, which is a developer community focused on like creating like part of the possible for developers. I used to work in sales mm -hmm. and something I realized while, and this is just how the culture is. I noticed that like the community was tech t-shirt, jeans, sport coat. Sport coats make my skin itch, so I don't like wearing sport coats, especially now that we're remote. And I realized real quick that that it, it's a it's just a very superficial thing, but I noticed so much that that, that it's sort of the in crowd was were the people who were wearing the sport coats or whatever that sort of like you know costume is or the you know uniform is that sort of fits in. Yeah. And, I mean, ink, whatever it happens to be, that happens to you know be who you are. I noticed so much in both the company I worked for before Cisco. And then coming here that it's not just this company, it's just tech in general, but in a lot of places in the Bay Area where I happen to live, mm -hmm. you know, that you fitting in is such a it is such a pervasive part of the the culture in all of these corporate companies. And I've noticed that, at least from my perspective, the way that looks to me is sort of this 1950s-esque, like you go to job, you know, you go to work, you grab your briefcase, you put your hat on or whatever, and you do that thing. My dad worked in that sort of industry forever. And when I've talked to him, like, oh yeah, you go, every, you go to work every day to put a you know, sport coat on. And then right. one day, casual Fridays is now a thing. Like casual Fridays, like, what, like I, I grew up that way, but now I'm starting to realize that that's just, if that's not who you are, yeah. if you have to put that uniform on every day, you're not getting to be yourself. And oh. the, on the leadership side of things, I think, that's one of the, the biggest places as a leader, whatever title you happen to have, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It's one of the biggest places you can have an impact on people that you lead, whether they work directly for you or yeah. you just happen to have an impression on or have an impact on while mm -hmm. you're at work is if you can bring yourself, call it authenticity, call it being genuine, whatever term you want to use. If you can just bring yourself you know, to work and not just be here I am at work and here I am at home, I'm just Jeff. When you meet me on this camera, I am just Jeff or in person, right. no matter what. The more you can do that around people that you work with, the more they start to feel like they can just be who they are. And that has a positive impact for all of us because when we all just get to feel like we can be ourselves, yeah. we actually get to be ourselves. And then we get to know each other as ourselves and we start to want to collaborate more with each other and do more impactful things. We stop trying to impress everybody right. and we try to actually have an impact. And I think that's where real positive things come out of whatever we do as people and interact with each other, whether it's in our business or the company we work for or our personal lives, it's when we stop trying to impress people by putting that uniform on, whatever that uniform happens to be, or the mask, and just focus on having an impact on whatever we're doing right this minute. Come on, that's uh, good. It's, yeah. we all just feel better. You just start to feel better as a person. Um, and it doesn't have to be, I, I've talked to a few people who have been shied away from the idea of like, Big ideas like you're bringing your passions with you. It's like it doesn't have to. You don't have to think about it like a big, huge idea. Come if that's on. not your thing, that's okay. Right. You just need to think about it like just be yourself. You'll feel more comfortable, and you will end up having the impact, whether you realize it or not. And that's going to make you feel good. That's what's important. Oh my gosh, I, I could spend all day on this topic. Coach Lawrence asked a question, and I'm going to throw it over to him because I think it's a really good question when it comes to passion and being kind of uniquely, divinely, however it is you want to talk about it, Mike kind of alluded to it, um, this idea that, you know, there was something that he felt called to in terms of who he was as a leader. Coach Lawrence, can you pick it up from there? Yeah. And so this, N Natasha and Mike, and thank you. Thank you again for both sharing your stories, because I feel like there's this thing, right? When we talk about passion, we talk about purpose. Um, I feel like there's a actually even a stronger pull. And the question I have for both of you, what what gave you that belief that what you're doing now yeah. was your thing, Sorry. right? Because again, we have a lot of mimics in the world yeah. and we have a lot of people that are in the industry and doing different things. But what what makes you uniquely qualified to do what you do? That's good. That's yeah. good. Natasha? Well, I and thank you so much for that question. I've always felt that the fashion industry was saturated with a whole bunch of the same concepts and ideas. And at the age of 15 is when I decided I wanted to become a fashion designer and I wanted to contribute something different. So I knew from that age that I had to do something different. Like I yeah. had to be different. Yeah. 
So um, that was my mission. But uh, when I got that revelation that I had to tie in my faith with fashion, I was like, okay, like no one is doing this right now. Okay, so hold on a second. I hate to keep stopping you, but these are too good. Yeah. So you were doing something that was against the grain. Yes, definitely. It was against the grain, right? The fashion oh, wow. world, y'all know this, is not, and when, when Natasha talks about immodesty, there's modesty and immodesty. Yes. When she's talking about immodesty, the kind of normal thing we see on the runway, on the New York Fashion Fashion Week runway, and in a lot of places, right, is skimpy clothes, lots of skin, you know, models kind of walking down the runway naked. Is that kind of what you're talking about when you talk about immodesty? Yes. Natasha, That's okay. Exactly um what i'm trying to convey uh in modesty like as you said you know with uh, skimpy clothing i guess like overtly sexual you know uh pieces but yeah like so definitely i i felt that i needed to do something different and with me not only promoting modesty but also my faith yeah it was like, okay, it, is anyone really going to like gravitate towards this? But wow. I had to take that risk and um, pursue it. Come on, hold on. Okay, right there. That's good. Perp, you remember I told you passion will bring you to the table. It'll say, hey, this looks exciting. Mm -hmm. But purpose will keep you there. One of the things I love about Mike's story, Mike has always had a passion. He describes this. He's always had a passion for sports. He's always had a passion for kids he, in his work now. Mike, would you say it's fair to say you're living out your purpose? Yes, very much so. Wow, that's incredible. So Natasha, kind of kind of finish that thought because you're going somewhere. I like where you're going with this. <laughs> yeah, so um, I definitely felt that I found my purpose when I incorporated my faith into yeah. my passion. Yeah. And um, I thought about others, and, you know, as I, I pointed to earlier, I thought about how this will impact others, you know, with my story and um, my beliefs. Yeah. So um, passion to me is something that gives you a sense of joy and fulfillment and you invest in things that you're passionate about. Right. But purpose is something that you are destined to do. Come on, that's good. Come on, yeah, that's good. You know, purpose is more meaningful than your passion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the way that I say it is, not only passion brings you to the table, purpose will keep you there, but passion, if you think about it, when we think about romantic passion, what do we think about? We think about fire, heat, yeah. right? For mm -hmm. any of y'all that got like love booze, you know what I'm talking about. They walk in a room <laughs> and your knees buckle, okay? That's how it is with my boo. Anyway, yeah. anyway, um, you know, when we talk about romantic passion, we talk about this, this kind of fire thing, but pa passion and fire can go in and out. That's a word right there. Passion can go in and out. So the idea, the excitement, when things are good, when you have options, when you have a network, coach Kim, I know, you know, something about this, when you have kind of that energy that ignites your your interest right right but when things get hard you guys purpose is what will hold you the way that i say it is purpose is like a lighthouse a lighthouse does not move if the storms are raging around it is that right come on y'all that's really good i need y'all to wake up this morning if you're in the live stream and you believe that's the truth i need you to pop an emoji or a comment or something in there I, well, before we go any further, hold on a second, because I cannot do justice without acknowledging some of the folks we've got in the live stream. We have Dr. Philip Williams. I'm just going to call him doctor. Um, I'm going to prophesy. I don't know if that's true or not, but I think <laughs> man has something to say. One of these days, we're going to have him on a live stream. Um, listen, we've got uh, Miss Shereen Douglas, my sister from another mister. I love you, girl. And we have Beverly Wilkes in here. We've got Coach Alicia Newton. Uh, Coach Alicia, we have not seen you in a minute and I need you to like, we need to chat because I, I, I need you to get here on the live stream. We miss you. We have Miss Christina 
Grabnikas. Did I say that right, Christina? I said a little bit earlier this time. Anyway, um, who else do we have in here? Uh, we've got Debbie Beaudry Hatch. Hey, Coach Debbie. We're going to have her on. We're looking at probably December or January. She is a personal finance coach. I'm super excited to introduce you to her. Um, let's see. Uh, coach Alicia says, authenticity is your secret sauce, but like you, it shouldn't live in a bubble. Yeah. Mic drop. It should not live in a bubble. First, do your job well. Hold on a minute. She's preaching. Make an impact. Understand how to coexist with people whose authenticity may not show, hold on, I can't see, uh, with people whose authenticity may not align with yours. This is brilliant. Come on, you guys. We so often gravitate towards, well, they've got to like what I like, right? We focus on trying to create a, a twin, right, in authenticity. But listen, authenticity is incredibly personal. Your passions are incredibly personal. Natasha yeah. at, a, at a young age was out there on her own. Can you imagine? I mean, a young person. Out there, listen, for all of you young people out there that are like, you know what? Nobody else is doing what I'm doing. Nobody else is stepping out in faith. Nobody else is, is, is going in this way, maybe pursuing a business or learning uh, uh, an instrument or something like that. I think this is incredibly powerful. In the absence of disrespect, policy violation, et cetera, be authentic. Come yeah. on. She's talking about walk in who you are. One of the most powerful examples of me kind of walking in my authenticity, and I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't know what it was until after the fact. I was in a boardroom. I finally made it to the boardroom, and I was sitting across from another colleague who was an executive. I was an executive. He was an executive. And I had on a rhinestone pin. Now, y'all know I like my bling, okay? I always like my bling. So I'm sitting there. I have on this beautiful pendant. Mike, I think I told you this story. Mm -hmm. Did I tell you that story? I had on this beautiful brooch. It was gorgeous and blingy. And it made me giggle. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to wear my, you know, I had on a jacket. I was professional. So I'm sitting there talking to this joker and he's like, you know, such a, he's, he's a finance guy. I'm not gonna mention any names. Anyway, he's a finance guy. And he says, I can't, I, I'm having trouble focusing. And I'm like, what? And he's like, I can't focus for that thing you have on your jacket. And I was like, what are you talking about? He was so focused and he's like, it's so like bright. Could you like maybe tone it down? Y'all, he forgot who he was talking about. He forgot who he was talking to. And I said, so you don't like it? And he's like, not really. I said, got it. So we finished the meeting. A couple weeks later, I walked past a counter and there was this gorgeous, beautiful brooch. And for just a minute, I hesitated. I'm like, oh, you know, I can't. Yeah, that's not. a. And then I walked away from the counter, came back and I was like, I take that brooch. I have a colleague who's going to love that. I wore that brooch and I'm still wearing that brooch. Authenticity is something you have to own. There may be nobody who's going with you. Nobody else may order tater tots. Order your tater tots. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Can I chime in for a second on that? Come on. Uh, you still got Alicia's uh, thing up on the screen. And I, I, you, that story you just told and what Alicia said, I'm reading on the other screen here. Someone's authenticity may align not align with yours. That's the point. <laughs> like that in itself is the point. Like what you just said. Like with the right reaction that that person you mentioned should have had is, "Wow, that brooch is super distracting. Can you tell me about it?" Like or something wow, like that. Come on, it's yes. not. It's just distracting that I just can't. It's like oh it's stuff through the person's chest. Who cares? Like I get super frustrated when I hear that sort of stuff because it's 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 like we should not all be the same or even try to be the same. We're supposed to be different people with different backgrounds and different perspectives that we bring. Every meeting that I have been in in the last year where that sort of thing has happened or like everyone's joking the same way or acting the same way or saying the same congratulations 400 times in a, what, you know, in a, a chat stream someplace. It's like, yeah. why? Like, I don't, we don't all need to put our voice out in the same exact way. That's not the point of this. So mm -hmm. I, 
sorry, I just had to be on that. No, no, I, I want to ask Rakesh to comment on that for just a second, but I want to shout out somebody who's in the live stream today. Her name is Paula Garland. Paula is one of the most amazing leaders I've ever met. One day I'm going to have her on the live stream. She's from a company called Employment Learning Innovations. Sarah, I need you to pop over ELI, Employment Learning Innovations, and pop the link in the live stream. Uh, Employment Learning Innovations was um, founded by one of the men that I consider a mentor and friend. His name is Stephen Paskoff. Stephen is an attorney, a corporate attorney by trade, but his company focuses on teaching leaders how to treat each other with dignity and respect. And listen, when it comes to your passion, your authentic brand, that thing that makes you stand out. I want you to understand that these folks at Employment Learning Innovations, ELI, have really found the secret sauce to teaching people how to treat each other with dignity and respect. You do not have to agree. Listen to me very carefully. In a season where there's an election coming and there's all this kind of mess out there, I think there has never been a better time for Employment Learning Innovations and all the things that they're doing to help equip leaders and organizations to figure it out. We have to figure it out. The ground has swelled, it's here. Coach Kim Dudash, I need you to jump in here and talk about this idea of being the same and how does it, does it help us or does it hurt us? Oh, you know, I, as I listen to Natasha and Mike both speak, I think what I love more than anything else is that they, they were not going to be satisfied with just following the status quo. You know, there's when you when you realize that what you bring to the table is different, it makes everybody else uncomfortable because it's you know, it's like this is what we're all supposed to do. That's right. And I love that you both listen to that voice inside of you that said happiness is not what I'm after. I'm after fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Right. And so you followed what was fulfilling. And and Mike, I loved what you said, you know, that this is your stop for this current time. Yeah. And how many of us um, start off with, some, well, both of you did this. You started off in something that you knew you were about, but how many people stay there and they never allow themselves to really reflect and see that maybe I have a next step. You know, we, we'd say, okay, I've got, this is what I've always wanted to do, wanted to do this when I was little and I'm going to do this forever. And then they realize they're unfulfilled, but they, they don't do anything about it. But both of you listen to that voice inside of you um, that said, no, this is the next step. This is the next step. And, you know, Mike, shoot, this may not be your final stop in the road, right? But this is you are able to live out your passion and your purpose here. And who knows what may come. This may be what you do from this point out, but it may not be. Um, so I, I think that, you know, don't worry about everybody else and their fear of you being different. Let's just get out there and be who we were created to be, do what we were created to do. And um, I mean, Natasha, you're right. You bring something to the fashion world that is so different and unique. And you could have been afraid to step forward, but you weren't. And I can tell you that what you do, it speaks to me, you know? So uh, yeah, Karen, I mean, we've got to, we've got to just, we've got to figure out what our purpose is and live it because that's where fulfillment comes. Yeah, that's yeah. where, that's where peace comes, right? Oh my gosh. Mic drop right there. Peace comes when you allow your passions to lead you to your purpose. Listen to me, Mike was an amazing, when, when I met him, I remember, first of all, he's like, I'm five foot three. He's like towering over me. I'm like, who is this guy? Like, I wanna know who he is. He walks into a room and commands a room. And as we got to know each other and I got to hear his story, part of what I realized is that he was not clear in that moment about just how great he was. Come on. He was not clear about what he had in front of him. Natasha, if you watch her stories, she has an amazing YouTube channel. Y'all go follow Natasha Lampkin, Tashi Inc. Go follow her on the web, on social media. Go watch her story. She is, I mean, the fashion world is not exactly the most encouraging space. I'm just saying, 
Okay. You get eaten alive. They eat their young and are pretty proud of it. She had no reason to believe that her passion of making beautiful, gorgeous fashion. And by the way, Natasha's line is a luxury line and worth every dime. Her pieces are collector's items. Okay. If you're looking for that signature piece, I want y'all to go check her out. Don't go anywhere else. I'm sorry, Macy's and Nordstrom's and all the <laughs> places. We love y'all, but just for a minute, we're going to make some room for Natasha because this woman is doing some things and she got there over time, creating the life you want, working in your passion, connecting your passion to your purpose is a journey. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Come on. It's a journey. It's not a destination. And how many times Coach Lawrence, Coach Kim, Coach Jeff, how many times do you run into leaders and they're so stuck in the moment, right? They're so stuck in the moment because they're like, well, some so-and-so won't let me live out my passion, right? I'm preaching this morning, y'all. This is good. You run into somebody who presents an obstacle, right? They don't give you the promotion that you want. They don't acknowledge you in the meeting. Coach Lawrence, I know you got something to say about this. They don't acknowledge you in the meeting or they don't invite you to the party or whatever, make your own party. Rock Your Vision exists right here because I created the community that I needed. Listen to me. I didn't grow up having a big family. around. I wanted 17 children, okay? I didn't have that. So guess what? I have nine godchildren. I created that system that I needed. Some of y'all are so stuck focusing on you're not able to do your passion or or you don't see your way to your passion that you're stuck in the wilderness. It's hard to move forward. I'm going to shut up. I'm going to stop preaching. Uh, but Coach Lawrence, I need you just to speak a word on that. Yeah. Coach Kim, I need you to run in behind him and, <laughs> and say something about that. And then I got a couple of questions that were sent in by the community. Yeah. Um, and so so one of the things I had to answer for myself and, and this is and I love this conversation because I could do this for a week as well. Just talking. Right. Um, but I had to get clear on uh, where fake me ended and real me began. Uh oh, and, wait a minute. Yeah. Say yeah. it again. I, I, I had to get clear on when when fake me ended and real me uh, began. And that started when I got real with myself and I stopped apologizing uh, on who I really was right. and, and to make others feel comfortable with me in their presence. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was figuring out and once I got clear, it's like, oh, it's their thing. Yeah. Um, I really started the last and the reason why I'm boss full time now is it really I had to be true to me. And mm -hmm. I said to the last organization, I said, oh, I said, it's OK. It's not you. It's really me. Like yeah. in, in relationship, like it was like I have to go. Because you've shown me what you're desiring to do and how you're intending to be. I said, so I must remove myself. And I had to get OK. And I had to repeat it to myself. And I was like, nah, I'm a you, you be you and and I'm I'm a be me. Mm -hmm. And and so because I wanted to be me full time. Um, and like you said, Jeff, uh, I wanted to be whole. I wanted to be authentic. Mm -hmm. I had to remove myself from that situation that was harming me. Mm -hmm. um, and that when I just like the light bulb came on, was like, man, I could, I could be me full time. Like, yeah. I didn't think it was a thing. You didn't, you didn't know you had options. I didn't know. And, and once right. I released myself to be fully successful, th then that's when the game changed. And that's when the right people, the right community began to reveal itself to me because I was then ready. Yeah. And so it's almost one of those things. Like when you're, when you're trying to fake be something or half be something, mm -hmm. you, you, those are the types of things that come into your space. Mm -hmm. And so when you become 100% who you're supposed to be and stop being, uh, stop apologizing for it, then who is really supposed to be in, in your, your space, reason, seasons, lifetimes, understanding that again, nothing's permanent, mm -hmm. but, but you need to evolve. You need to be you 100% of the time. So you can begin to influence your sphere the way that you were intended to. And once I, once I got real with that, that's when it was like, it just, it was game changer after that. 
Wow. So I, I I know Coach Kim going 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 fired up. Come on, Coach Kim. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you know Lawrence, that resonates so much with me because I think of um, you know being in a corporate environment and um, being different, but feeling like I was uh, I, the people around me were trying to silence that because it didn't fit the mold, right? And uh, when you realize that. I'm not supposed to fit the mold. And I guess that's what I, I see in Natasha and Mike also. It's like, I'm not supposed to fit that mold. There is a place that I can only fill, right? And if I'm not in that space, then there's a, you know, there's a part that's not going to be played out. Um, so it's so important to be authentic and to be who you are and, and to realize that, um, that it's okay. I mean, it's okay to, to be different and not to say, Oh, you should leave your position or, you know, it may be exactly where Come you're on. supposed to be, yes. but you still need to have the courage to be completely authentic and to, um, you know, don't, don't get caught up in everyone else's fear that you are not, what, I mean, they're playing a role. Yeah. And when you step out and you say, I'm not playing that role, I'm going to be yeah. me and I'm going to do this job and I'm going to be effective. I mean, like Jeff said, if everybody is trying to, if everybody's trying to be the same, then all of that brain power that we could be using to do things that are effective and creative and and world changing, we're so stuck on trying to, to, to impress each other and, and be the same and wear our sports coats and, and eat our arugula salads. And, you know, we're so caught up in that that we're not doing anything creative and we're no. not doing anything world changing. Okay. Arugula salads are fine, by the way. Like I didn't yeah. to throw shade on <laughs> arugula salads. They're fine. They're just not for me. But anyway, um, Natasha yeah. and Mike, I want you guys to talk about this for a minute. Coach Kim alluded to it, and I think it's really, really important. Um, and I know I know Coach Jeff and Coach Lawrence also have some things to say about this. So I just want to chat this up a little bit because I think this is going to help somebody. Um, Coach, Coach Lawrence just said, play your position. Coach Alicia mentioned it earlier. Listen, um, there are going to be times and spaces, I call them seasons, when you need to learn some things where your passion may um, may sit in the shadow of someone else's vision, of someone else's purpose. God will use that. Listen to me really carefully. That is, um, that is not wasted space, right? Coach Jeff, Coach Kim, Coach Lawrence, that's not wasted space. Having connection with your passion is all about realizing that your passion and the steps you need to take to be able to walk it out is a journey. The space that you're in right now may be a learning space for you. Uh, Mike, Kenny, can you talk a little bit about maybe your experience with going through a season where, you know, you maybe didn't feel like there was space for you, but there was indeed something for you to learn. Do you have anything to say about that? I do. Actually, the two times in my career I went through this where uh, it happened to be my boss. Um, we were we were zigging and zagging. I could not get on board with what they wanted, how they behaved, mm. how they led. Come on. And so at first I, I pouted, you know. Oh, it's about them. It's about them. It's about them. But then I made it about me and I made it about me from the standpoint of showing me the way of what I don't want and who I want to become. And so coming out of each of those situations, I went from a position where I want to be promoted. I wasn't being promoted. I left and I went. And that's actually when I went to the Globetrotters and my life from a work standpoint went from a five to an eleven. Wow. It just off the charts. I had great success. I felt like <clears throat> there are two times in the work environment where I felt like I've made my mark. I found my home. Yeah, I've, I'm starting to achieve what I always believed. Both of those situations came from this being in the dark, as you described it, wow. because I was biding my time trying to crystallize 
who I was and what I wanted. The yeah. other time was just recently where I wasn't in full agreement with how the company was being run. I was now at the executive level and said, I want to go run a business. Yeah. And I got to the opportunity that I have now, but I use I, all the things that I didn't like or I wanted to improve on to different. Now I have the chance to, to lead and roll out. I would not have had that opportunity had I not been in this conflicted position of, I don't agree with this. So mm. I'm going to do something about it, but I'm going to learn from it. And I think that was the most important thing was taking the positive from me not agreeing as opposed to me just going, you know, sitting in the corner. Pout. Mm -hmm. So I worked hard to, to crystallize that and then get into the position and now thrive in it because I was preparing if I was running, this is what I would do. Wow. I didn't sit idle. You didn't sit idle. Listen to me, y'all. If you're in a situation right now where you feel like you're not being seen or your passions are not fully coming, this is a season to prepare, right? Because if you walk around, Mike, I love what you said about you were pouting. I cannot tell you how many times I meet leaders who are in a position where they feel like they're not being recognized or not promoted or whatever they should have. Da, 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 da. I think everything happens for a reason. And I believe that nothing is wasted. So that season of not feeling seen, it can affect how you show up. Come on. That's good. It can affect how you show up. You walk into a room, you're pouting. Your energy is off. I met with the leader last week in person. They've gone back to in-person sessions. And I said, so tell me how you're doing. So he started to go through all of the all of the things he had accomplished. And I said, that's not what I asked you. I asked you, how are you doing? Right. And I said, your energy is off. And literally his shoulders slumped and he was like, you can see it. And I said, um, yes, <laughs> people can see. Is that right, Mike? People can see much. when your energy is off. Natasha. Talk to us a little bit about the space of maybe an experience that you had where you felt like you could do more or you wanted to do more, but but where you were was where you needed to be in the moment. Talk to us about that for a minute. Okay. So um, I definitely relate to uh, everyone uh, concerning being your authentic self. Mm -hmm. First off, I have to say that um, I've dealt with that greatly while I was working in corporate. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's been quite a few times I felt that way. I felt that um, I wasn't being heard or seen. Yeah. Um, after marketing, I uh, I got a job in merchandising. Mm -hmm. Then after merchandising, I got a job in buying. Okay. So, and all this time I was working on my business. <laughs> right. Wow. But, uh, so in buying... I felt that there was, you know, like you're, you're working for on, you're working underneath someone else's vision. Yeah. So I know that there were certain ideas that I had when I, um, when I presented it to them, it wasn't really received like that. So I did felt in a way where I was being silenced in a sense, but I had to sit back and allow myself to be humble mm. and, uh, to know like, okay, this is someone else's vision. Right. Um, right now, I don't feel heard. Right now, I don't feel like I'm being seen. And this is in, mar in, in buying, by the way. Mm -hmm. Right now, I don't feel like I'm being seen, but you know what? I'm going to take the back seat and continue to work on whatever I have to work on. Mm -hmm. but, but know that I, if I if I do allow myself to speak up about something, mm -hmm. then I know that at least I made that effort and those steps to do so. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because yeah. sometimes there are moments where you have managers who they don't really see what you see or receive, you know, like your uh, whatever you're presenting to them and right. In a way, and I, you know, I had, I had quite a few times where I felt that way, but, you know, I tried my best. And so there was, there was purpose in that season, then. 
there was it was it was an experience that I had to go through because I knew like as a businesswoman, as a um now like an owner of my own company, yeah. I would never allow any of my workers to feel that way. Right. So wow. I, I I learned from those experiences. Yeah. You know, like even if this is not an idea that I can see, yeah. I'm still gonna give that person an open room, like an open platform for them to express themselves and be open to the idea. Mm -hmm. you no, know, but uh yeah, you're gonna find yourself sometimes feeling that you're not being heard, but mm -hmm. you know, you you have to do your best to really put yourself out there. You have to reframe your perspective. This is the yeah. way I'm saying you have to reframe your perspective. I remember at least three times in my career where when I shifted my energy, when I reframed my perspective, I show up completely differently. I remember one of my bosses literally said to me when I when it came to me one night in a dream, <laughs> you need to get your act together because that season, at least in my life, God was using to prepare me for what was next. I'm going to be honest with you. If I had not been through some of the difficult experiences that I had been through, I would not be where I am today. We would not be having this conversation. Those experiences were a setup for a breakthrough and for me to be able to get to what I believed was my ultimate purpose. So I've got a question for our, for our guest today. How did you know when it was time to stop playing it safe? How did you know? When you think about kind of that next step, Mike, you talked about recognizing when, when it was time to go, right? When it was time to make a transition from one job to the next. How did you know when it was time to stop playing it safe? Um, as I reflect on my career, and I've been doing a lot of that um, recently because we've been at home and reflecting and nostalgic. Mm -hmm. There are really three people and three points in my life that I feel have set me on this path that I'm on now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the the three people are my mother, because 70 years old, still working as emergency room nurse, just celebrated her 50th year. Hey, mom, yeah. come on, y'all. We need to celebrate that. That's amazing. Fake hip, fake, fake hip, fake um, foot. And she is, she is still rocking. So I learned my passion from there. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Kurt Snyder, who was the CEO of the Globetrotters when I was there. Right. He, gave me, he gave me wisdom. Mm. He took me under his wing and showed me that um, there is more to life than my narrow view. And then the third person, Karen, was actually you. Me? Um, yes, because you, get, you gave me this. You gave me confidence. And me to be me. So those three people. But the other, the other thing that I go with those three people has always been this voice inside my head. Mm -hmm. And that voice, to answer your question, took me um, to places where my initial thought wow. on, on, there were actually another three, these three set of choices throughout my career was no. And the voice told me, yes. Mm. So is the voice God? Possibly. I'm not sure. But I had an opportunity when I was very young to move to Philadelphia from Boston. Uh -huh. I had never left New England in my life, never been on a plane, never done any of that. And I had this opportunity to go. Or I could have stayed and worked for my passion, the Boston Celtics, and new head coach, Rick Pitino. And I was like, oh, of course I'm going to do this. Why would I ever want to move to Philadelphia? Everyone. And, and did, if I remember this directly, didn't Rick call you personally? He called me. Yeah, he, call, he called me and said, hey, um, you know. The job's yours. And I'm like, that's no small feat, you guys. If you know who Rick Pitino is, I'm just saying, like, y'all need to catch this, okay? He said no. I, I said no. He was shocked. I was shocked. Why did I, I, mean, I couldn't believe I said no because this is what I want to do my whole life. Oh my God. And I said no. And I moved to Philadelphia. And I don't know why, but it was like out of body kind of experience. And then one of these other opportunities that that I had was to, to move to Georgia. I had just got permission to, uh, in my same role, move home to Boston. I was living in Philadelphia at the time. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I want to Boston, nothing stopped me. Um, and I met a person who was 
uh, important in my life. And he's like, go to Atlanta. It will be good for you. The company needs you. I'm like, I'm not going to Atlanta. I'm going to Boston. I'm finally going home after right. 16 years of not being home. I want to be one of my kids to be with their, their grandparents and their cousins and so on and so forth. And like, again, same sort of thing. Yeah. My, uh, my initial reaction is no. Yes. So then I go, I go to Atlanta. Well, if I don't go to Atlanta, not only am I not in the job now, I don't meet Karen. I don't know what happens to me. Wow. Um, so no pressure. That's just no. amazing. So in these situations, like, you know, these kind of fork in the roads, yeah. I, there's just been something inside of me yeah. that has told me, even though my initial thought is no, that's scary. I'm not doing it. Right. I do it. And I've done it. And, and I don't, I, I can't explain it to you, but that is how it's worked for me. Wow. Wow. Mm. Natasha, talk to us for a second about when did you know, yeah. like, I watch your stories. Y'all go follow Tashi Inc. <laughs> on social media, on the web, T-A-S-H-E-E Inc.com. Um, when I watch your stories, and she's got some amazing videos on YouTube, like, I'm old enough to be your mama, first of all. <laughs> um, but for to be such a young person, to have this kind of inner drive, and a knowing that there was something more and something different for you. You know, I mean, talk about a dream career, international New York fashion model. Are you kidding me? Like, that's what everybody wants, isn't it? How did you know when it was time to stop playing it safe? Well, I believe that I never really played it safe <laughs> all my life. Come on. Um, I, I, to be honest with you, like I've always been a risk taker and um, always wanted to be different, not the same, you know. Um, yeah, I guess a born leader, but uh, with fashion, with modeling, I just knew it was because of the emptiness that I felt inside. Wow. It wasn't worth, worth it for me that um, all these things are happening for me, getting all the accolades and, you know, the recognition. If I'm not fulfilled inside, then it's not purposeful. Mm. So I knew that something is totally off. And that's when God met me where I was. And um, he showed me my purpose. Mm. And um, even though like I was very adamant about the idea of pursuing a faith-based lifestyle brand that promotes modesty and fashion, Come on. I was like, okay, God, if this is something that you really want me to do, and you just gonna have to do it, yeah, I'm just gonna have to do it. And if it's helping others, then why not? Right. And I, you know, I made that. I took that leap of faith, and I pursued it. And you know, it's it was definitely a risk. And I left corporate last year. Wow. Full time. So that's when I really, <laughs> really, really knew that it was no time for me to play it safe anymore. And I pursued it full time. You know, when you, when you play it safe, um, you will, you will live someone else's dream. There is a difference between allowing the season to teach you, allowing the season to fuel your ideas and to prepare you, allow the season to prepare you. Yeah. Now, unless you live in Georgia, the seasons don't just change overnight, right? There is a process, even if we don't see it. Y'all catch this. This is really good. There is a there is a process playing itself out. You may not see it. Jeff Bull did not always see what was happening in his transition, right? Jeff, it was, you know, you kind of look back and you're like, oh, that's what was happening, right? Like you in the moment. You can miss it all together. But listen, your passion will point you in the right direction. Your passions are breadcrumbs, but they are not the whole meal. Can I get a witness? That was good. <laughs> yes. That was really good. Y'all missed it anyway. Um, yeah. How did you know, Coach Kim, you've had some major changes in your life. Kim, by the way, is one of my best friends in the world. Um, so that secret is out. 
So I know a little bit of the backstory, but Coach Kim, how did you know when it was time to stop playing it safe? You know, Karen, I mean, I can't emphasize um, any more than what's been emphasized this morning about just following that inner voice. Yeah. Um, I mean, there are lots of times when um, I've been trudging along and thinking, oh, my gosh, I do not know where this is headed. But mm -hmm. just following what I knew um, was was right and not knowing what the outcome was was going to be. I mean, when I think about uh, even getting into coaching, you yeah. know, I started preparing for that long before I ever saw a path to be able to do it. And I just kept preparing. And, and you know, it, if I were to look at it logically, I would have said, eh, there's no way mm -hmm. I'm not going to pursue that. But I just felt this this pull. And so I thought, okay, then I'm going to prepare. And so when I think about Karen, you're talking about these seasons, mm -hmm. um, you know, I just kept preparing, kept preparing. And then so many circumstances in my life changed and then the door opened up. And when the door opened up, I was ready to go. Come I was on. prepared. I had it, you know, and um, I, I, yeah, there's just, there's just something about listening and trusting yourself. Stop looking around at what everyone else mm. is doing and what every you know, the, the, I just think of like a machine. We get so caught up in the machine and, and we feel like this is what we're supposed to do. And this is the next step I'm supposed to take. And there's something about looking within yourself. It's all there yeah. and trusting that. Right. And just moving forward, even when it doesn't really make a lot of sense myself. Why did I say no to that? You yeah. know, but if you had said yes, you yeah. would you would just be going the wrong way. Yes. So come on. Oh, yeah. my gosh, you guys. Listen, playing it safe um, will always keep you playing small. Playing it safe will keep you playing small. And here's the thing. So oftentimes people feel like in order for me to pursue my passion, that thing inside of you that just lights your heart on fire, right? I always ask my leaders, what excites you and what exhausts you? Here's what I see. Y'all know this is true, right? When I say, what excites you? When you talk to Jeff Bull or you talk to Lawrence Henderson and you say, what excites you? Like their face lights up. Their whole energy changes, right? They lean into it and they and they look up when they're talking and they describe how they're feeling and all like that. And, th and then I ask the question, what exhausts you? Literally, like their whole energy changes. Your passions will be breadcrumbs if you allow them to be. But don't get distracted because everybody else is ordering arugula salads. I'm just saying, I need y'all to get this. Hashtag arugula. Hashtag tater tots. Okay. I love tater tots and I will rock some tater tots in stilettos covered in rhinestones. I have no shame. And I know Philip Williams loves him some tater tots. In fact, he says he's going to be having them for lunch. He says, when we can navigate through a season of uncertainty, we've led with clarity and continue to move forward. Listen to me. What we're experiencing in 2020 is a setup for something awesome. Because as long as you have a pulse, until the time comes when you're not here anymore, you've got something to do. That should be your clue. Listen to me. Your passions are an indicator, right? They're an indicator, you guys. Come on. Use that thing that's in your heart to get curious about. If you are in a season of quiet, if you maybe have lost your job, if you're feeling lost or disconnected, take time to get reconnected to your passion. And in fact, uh, if you pop over to the website, rockyourvision.net, I've got my, my passion clarity workbook absolutely free for you. I need y'all to go download that, share it with your friends, have them log on and download their copy. The Passion Clarity Workbook is a starting place to get clear about your passion. And here's the thing. Oftentimes, people think they know their passions, right? Oh, I'm really passionate about this. I really love this. I really love that. You can tell whether or not somebody knows their passion because when you ask them, it'll come up really quickly. Can I get an amen from all my coaches? Mm -hmm. It'll come up really quickly. But we all need an opportunity to revisit what we think we're passionate about. 
listen, I've had so many opportunities to go into business. People are like, oh my gosh, Karen, I'd love to go into business with you. Or, oh my gosh, Karen, I'd love for you to come work with us. And in the moment, it seems like a really good idea, but then it wanes. Your purpose will bring you to the table. Your, your, your passion will bring you to the table. Your purpose will keep you there. I don't know about you. I could go another two hours, but we don't have that kind of time because everybody's got stuff to do. So we're going to wrap it up. We've gone a little bit long today, but for a minute, for just a minute, can y'all give some love to Mike Kenny, executive vice president at Rick and Baseball? Can you see why he's one of my favorite leaders? Yes. This guy is a sweetheart, wicked smart, has a heart to serve. And he really, I think, exemplifies what it means to lead well. And so, Mike, I am thrilled that you've been able to join us. Would you just kind of leave us maybe with one thought about connecting your passion to your purpose? Well, again, thank you for having me. This has been an unbelievable experience for me. I've learned a lot and connected, and I'm looking forward to taking this forward, uh, hopefully with all of you um, yes. and participating in this. Um, look. This is this comes down to looking in, at yourself um, yeah. and figuring out what you want to do. And you can look at things two ways. Where you see where you see opportunity, it becomes easier. When you see something that's in front of you that's difficult, you see obstacles. Right. What do you really want? Because you may not have that straight path every time. You may have to divert and go 40 miles out of your way wow. to get there. But once you realize that's what you have to do, that's what you have to do if you want it. Yeah. So you have to decide. It's not going to be handed to you. I tell my kids all the time. If you want something, earn it. I'll celebrate what you earn versus what's handed to you, whether that's in school or sports anytime. Even if you don't succeed, I'll celebrate the effort. And so I would say that's the most important thing is identifying what you want and then planning out the path. So good. The path's not going to be straight. Yeah. 99.9% .9 of the time, it is not straight. In my own, I said no. Why am I saying yes? What is happening? <laughs> I've lived in seven states. Again, never been on a plane, never left Massachusetts as a child. Wow. And now I've lived all over the place. So um, just, I, I think that's the most important thing. Coach Lawrence said it, be, be real with yourself. The yeah. fake you, the real you. If you want it, you have to go and you got to Dora the Explorer. What's the path? I'm going this way. I'm not way. Dora. You did You'll not do Dora. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You'll get there. Oh my gosh. That is amazing. Mike, thank you so much for making time in your schedule to be with us today. We know you're a busy man. Please congratulate Mr. Ripken on our behalf and thank him for allowing you just to represent Ripken Baseball. How can we find Ripken Baseball and how can we find you? Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, okay. Mike, I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, that's probably the best way. Uh, and then Ripken Baseball. It's ripkenbaseball.com. We are based right now in Walt Disney World. Everyone's been watching the, the NBA in the bubble and MLS. We are taking over that facility there. You can find us in Tennessee. Okay. Uh, you can find us in South Carolina, and you can find us here in Maryland and soon to be a few more places. We've got some exciting things we'll be rolling out. Amazing. If, if, you, if you know someone that plays travel baseball or softball, send them our way um, and we'll show them an excellent time. Awesome. Well, I, we will certainly post that on all of our social media channels. We're going to start following Ripken Baseball and shouting you out because we happen to think that you are absolutely rocking your vision. Uh, you. And we're so grateful for you. Thank you for taking time to spend with us today. Mike Kenny, Natasha Lampkin, <laughs> where do I begin? Um, young woman, you have a purpose in the earth. I think God is just getting started with you. I think everything that you've been through is a setup for a breakthrough. Um, I think he's going to begin to open doors for you. He's going to introduce you to some people and make a way where it seems like there's no way. I think this is a season for w exactly what you're doing and how you're doing it. So I'm just going to shout it out for those of you in this community that are in fashion, uh, that are in merchandising, production, New York, uh, Chicago, all of the places. I need y'all to go follow Natasha Lampkin and I need you to reach out 
to her because I think she's got something uh, incredibly special going on. And uh, I predict we're going to see her on the cover of Vogue. Y'all say it with me. Hashtag Vogue cover. Hashtag Vogue cover. I'm just saying. Natasha, uh, just a few words about, um, just to leave with this amazing community, about uh, linking your passions to your purpose. Well, first, I would like to say I receive everything that you said. <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, having me. Thank you for all of you for being on this panel with me. I um, What I would like to leave to uh, for the audience, I, what I would like to leave is don't settle for something less. That's good. Always strive for the best. Yeah. And I felt that I was not fulfilled in the areas that I was in, in modeling and even working corporate. Mm -hmm. And once God showed me his vision for my life, mm -hmm. that's when I made the step to pursue my purpose. It's good. So you can you can have the call on your life, but it's up to you to receive it. Mm. That's you amazing. Answer it, or you can hang up the phone. Answer the call. Answer the call. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's not easy. Nothing in life is easy. Nothing in life is easy. Coach Kim says that all the time. No, and I nothing good is easy. No, that's right. Pursuing your purpose is even harder. Mm -hmm. because you are going against the grain. Yeah. So, um, yeah, like if you're not fulfilled, I suggest that you pursue something that will give you that fulfillment, which is Amen. your purpose. Thank you, Natasha. It has been amazing to meet you. We're going to stay in touch. And this is not the last time we're going to see each other. I just want to um, uh, give an opportunity to our coaches um, this is the RYV squad. If you don't know these amazing leaders and these amazing coaches, um, these are working active coaches. And I just want you to know that in a season when the world feels uncertain, there is absolutely place for them. These folks are busy working coaches at some of the best and biggest brands and companies and organizations around the world. Jeff Bull, just leave us with one quick thought and then let us know where we can find you. Absolutely. Um, Mike actually inspired something I had been thinking about recently. I wanted to say out loud that it, I had to go through when I was getting myself kind of in the right mindset to mm -hmm. prep for the role that I'm in now, which is mm -hmm. your career is not your resume. Your career is not your resume. Your career is a story. Ooh, so what, do you, what part do you want to tell next? Love that's good. I love it. I love it. Coach Lawrence, uh, give us a quick word and then let us know where we can reach you. Yeah. Um, so as as everyone was, was finishing up, I thought about one of my buddies, Tim Timothy Alexander, who said it doesn't have to be easy. It just has to be possible. Um, and if it's your purpose, it, it's always available and possible. Um, so you can find me uh, across social media, Boss Lab, B-O-S-S-L-L-A-B. -S -S and uh, I love to connect with people on LinkedIn. Full government name, Lawrence E. Henderson, Jr. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn. So it was great being here. Thank you once again, Karen. Awesome. Thank you, Coach Lawrence. And Coach Kim, can you just yeah. leave us with a word and then let us know where we can find you? Well, like we said, Karen, nothing good comes easy. Good and comes easy. and don't be afraid to go against the grain. That's what we, you know, that's what you were created to do. We weren't we weren't meant to fit in all in the same mold. All, all right. of us do not fit in the same mold. So I have really enjoyed this today. And Natasha and Mike, you have inspired me today yeah. um, through this conversation. And I just am so um, happy that now I can uh, connect with you guys and stay in touch. So um you can find me across all social media at uh, coach at coach Kim Dudash and uh, also on LinkedIn, Kimberly Dudash and uh, my website, uh, Dudash Executive Coaching dot com. So I'd love to connect with you guys. Amen. Listen, we have had another completely lit on fire Monday morning jumpstart. You have the energy you need now to go out and have amazing, have an amazing week. Do not forget Download your Passion Clarity Workbook um, at rockyourvision.net 
and save the date. Y'all need to be looking for it. Registration for the webinar, the path back to your why is going to be dropping very soon. If not today, maybe tomorrow. I'm just going to put it out there. You guys be following that. I want you to remember something. You have options. That is my mission to teach leaders just like you. You have options. You can get focused, connect to your purpose and develop the perspective you need to live life on your own terms, whether you're a professional or the entrepreneurial space, ministry, whatever it is, you were designed for something big. Listen, I'm a, I'm a flash you. If you got a pulse, you got a purpose. I'm just saying, y'all, I hope you have a great rest of the week. I will see you in social media land and all over the web at rockyourvision.net. Listen, have an amazing week. Leaders and panel, hold two seconds for me. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. Bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You. Bye. <laughs>